A fun night here celebrating Mike Shanahan and Steve Atwater. We're here with Terrell Davis. Terrell, how does it feel to be back here at Empower Field at Mile High, reminiscing with all your former teammates? Yeah, well, it's not just being back here uh, at the stadium, but I don't know if you know, but I moved back to Denver. So I'm actually back in two ways, in the city and back here at uh, Empower Field. But, you know, it, this is always a special time because it gives you a chance to reflect on what we've done as a as an organization, as a team, and then to see the players who really made it happen, who allowed me to be, you know, TD, and those special moments that we've had back then, they just, they're not, they don't go anywhere. Like, we always, we're always gonna have those moments and memories, and nights like tonight are nights where we get a chance to, to reflect and, and just kind of go down memory lane and, and enjoy those moments. Well, definitely well-deserving here. Mike yeah. Shanahan getting inducted into the Ring of Fame and obviously Steve Atwater being inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Mike, it's, it was about time. Like, it was long overdue. I don't know what we're waiting for, why it took so long. But, of course, that's a no-brainer to have Mike in the Ring of Fame. Um, so I'm excited for him. And, and we all know, I think, next stop was going to be Canton, Ohio. So I think this is the first step to Mike being recognized as one of the greatest coaches to have ever coached this game. So I'm happy for him. Of course, Steve getting his ring. Um, happy for him. Like, it couldn't have played with a better teammate. And so happy for Steve that he's finally, again, for him, it was long overdue too, right? So he finally got his jacket, gets his ring. And I think that's, I think that's the, the culmination of it. I think, the, yeah, the ring is the last one. And then, of course, we get our, our jackets tonight too, right? Which I'm pretty excited about. I got a gold one. Now I got an orange one. I got a navy one. What's the next one? I don't know. I, oh, I got a Boys and Girls Club Hall of Fame jacket too. So that's that's pretty cool. You got them all. <laughs> I, I think I have. I think I have most of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was it like playing for Mike, and what was it about him that made him so special as a coach? Yeah. So I, when I when I do, you know, whether it's talks and stuff like that for corporations, I, I always bring up Mike's name when it comes to leadership. I, I think he embodies what a leader is about. It's about not being able to kind of lead people with authority, but you lead people with inspiration, and um, and Mike has been able to do that, right? So he influences you to do things, um, but really he he's able to extract little talent, a lot of talent that you have in you. He's able to pull it out, and he just has a way of knowing how to how to kind of get you motivated you know and, and it's not the rah-rah speeches it's not the it's not doing it by threat he just has a way to to teach you things and have you think have you become a thinker um but prepare you for games like no other coach i've ever played for like his thing to prepare you for a game was to leave no stone untouched um and so when you go into a game you've, you've already basically won the game now you just got to execute and we've always felt we were always better, better prepared than the other team. That was our advantage. Every Sunday, every Saturday, Monday, Thursday, it didn't matter. When we hit the field, we were going to be more prepared than the other team. From a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint, an emotional standpoint. And that was the difference in us winning those games and bringing home championships. Leadership was strong. Best leadership that I've ever been around. So all contributed to Mike Shanahan. Well, I know that you and Steve are very close, yeah. obviously. There was no doubt he was going to be a Hall of Famer, one of the hardest hitting safeties in the league. But what was he like as a teammate for you? No, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. He was, he was the, I would, I wanna, I'm, I'm not going to say they were a perfect teammate, but he almost was <laughs> like that, right? Like, you can, when you say the ideal teammate, what is that person like, all right? You, uh, not only from the talent standpoint when he's on the field, how good he is, but how he helps other players on the team. Is he a cool guy to hang out with? Is he somebody you watch and you want to model? Um, was he a family man? I mean, so I look at teammates like that. And when you, when you look at Steve, he checks the box. Everything I just mentioned. I mean, the dude is a phenomenal player, number one. So he's, oh, he's a phenomenal player. Number two, he's a cool cat. Like, oh, this dude is nice. But they call him the silent assassin. He doesn't say a lot, but he's very humble. He's has, he has this very genuine soul about him. And let me tell you the impact he had on me when I first got here. So as a rookie, of course, I got here. I've heard of Steve Atwater. You know who he is. But the first time I was back there, we were doing a team drill. And I was back there, and, and I happened to just look up, and I see 27 just kind of about five yards off the ball where the linebackers are. <clears throat> I remember thinking to myself, 
who the hell? And I knew who it was, but my mind, I couldn't believe how big he was. I thought he was a linebacker. And I was like, who is number 27? And then it dawned on me, that's Steve Atwater. And I'm like, that's Steve Atwater. Like, right across the ball from me, five yards off the ball, and it's Steve. And I was like, this dude is incredible. He's huge. But what he would do is, uh, he, what he would do every once in a while was that when we would run a play, I remember he, Steve would pull me to the side. Now, I had never had players do this to me at all, defensive players, and he would give me sort of things that he said. He'd say, hey, you know, on this play, I knew it was going right because you were giving it away. And so he would give me tips on how not to give it away next time. You know, my alignment, where I would look. Uh, we all have these mannerisms sometimes before we catch a ball, we'll start wiping our hands. And we're not aware of that. And so he was able to point out things like that. And so that's what great teammates do. They are, they're helping you to become a better player. And Steve would do that. So he had a huge influence on my life. And uh, I, mean, I couldn't ask, like I said, I couldn't ask for a better teammate and I couldn't be happier for a better dude, so. Terrell, appreciate your time. So great catching up with you. You too, have a good one.